Welcome to the third in our series of mini lectures on digestion and absorption. This one is on proteins and amino acids. Again, my goal is for you to have a mental model of what happens when you eat something, something like this pizza. And here we're focusing on the proteins. So for you to have a you to be able to visualize what happens when you eat this to here, where we have amino acids that have been digested and absorbed into the body and are now available for the body's cells throughout the body to utilize both to make proteins, also to catabolize for energy, or to convert to things like glucose or fat if, con if consumed in excess. In the first lecture, we focused on carbohydrates. Here we'll talk about protein digestion and absorption. Remember that proteins are long linear polymers of amino acids that fold into specific structures that give their functions. This is true whether we're thinking about the proteins that do their functions within our body or we're thinking about the proteins that are within our foods. We, we eat lots of different hundreds if not thousands of different proteins in our diet and they all have different structures. Some are very highly folded Others are not so tightly folded, but in every case, we have to be able to break down those proteins to our single amino acids, and that where, that's where the story begins of how the process of digestion and then absorption occurs. Protein digestion begins in the stomach. First, the parietal cells in the stomach lining secrete hydrochloric acid, which has two important roles. First, this lowered pH the acid environment unfolds or denatures our proteins. So their highly folded state now becomes linear polymers as shown here. Secondly, the hydrochloric acid activates the inactive zymogen, pepsinogen, to become active, pepsin. And that's shown on the side here as well. So pepsinogen is made with an inhibitory peptide shown here and when the um, pepsinogen is in an acidic environment, the, um, that inhibitory peptide is released, and now we have the active form of pepsin. Activated pepsin cleaves the dietary polypeptides into shorter polypeptides, beginning the process of protein digestion. These polypeptides move to the small intestine, where the pH has been neutralized by bicarbonate that's been secreted from the pancreas. The pancreas also secretes several inactive zymogens of proteases. The inactivating peptide of trypsinogen is cleaved by enteropeptidase. This now activates trypsinogen to become the active protease trypsin. Enteropeptidase is an enzyme that's on the luminal surface of intestinal enterocytes. Activated trypsin cleaves off the inhibitory peptides of trypsinogen, making more trypsin itself, as well as the inhibitory peptides of several other digestive enzymes, creating active chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidase, as well as others not shown here. These activated proteases cleave the dietary polypeptides into single amino acids, uh, dipeptides, as well as some small oligopeptides. There are brush border enzymes that cleave the dipeptides and short oligopeptides into single amino acids. And then there are transporters that actively transport the amino acids into the intestinal enterocytes. There are amino acid carriers that then allow these amino acids to cross and eventually enter the port or blood system. This process is very similar to the absorption of sugars that we saw in the first video. This image shows another view of the pancreatic zymogen activation cascade. Recall that trypsinogen is one of the inactive zymogens secreted by the pancreas into the lumen of the small intestine. It interacts with the enzyme enteropeptidase, which is located on the microvilli surface pointing into the lumen, and enteropeptidase cleaves off the inactivating peptide from trypsinogen, releasing active trypsin. Trypsin then can also cleave 
the trypsinogen, making yet more active trypsin. And it's the trypsin enzyme that cleaves the inactive, inactivating peptides from the other digestive proteases, as well as for a protein that's required for the lipase activity. So, question. What would happen if this activation cascade were to occur within the pancreas instead of the lumen of the small intestine? Answer, digestion of the pancreatic acinar cells themselves. This cause the, causes the excruciating problem called pancreatitis. These last slides provide a summary of the key points of protein digestion and absorption. I hope that you found this short summary uh, video lecture useful.